Hello, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to the woods. In this video, I'm joined by Hazel. And today we are going to start on some bushcraft and we're going to be using tools today. We're going to use our knives. Got your knife? Yeah. And we're also going to use one of these, a folding pruning saw. And we're going to make a really basic and really simple project that Hazel will be able to use on our future trips out in the woods. This is a really nice simple project that a child can do assisted by an adult. They're going to make two items. Number one is a walking staff, something that they can take with them into the woods and they can use on their adventures. It also links into another project later down the line. Number two is a little toggle rope. They're going to make the toggle, attach a cord to it, and again, that is going to be used for other projects further down the line. As far as tools go, all they're going to use is one of these, their little folding knife, and one of these, a folding pruning saw. This is a, a starter project, and this is all about starting to instill in them the basic safety, self-preservation techniques that they're going to use for the rest of their lives. So we want to start it off right. Make sure that you've thought and planned it through. Don't do it just on the spur of the moment. Think about harvesting the wood. Think about the actual area that you're going to use to, to carry out the task. Do everything you can to get it all set up before you can go. So you can just concentrate on making sure that their drills are nice and safe. Now for the first bit of the project, you're gonna use the folding pruning saw. Now these backhoe pruning saws are really good, really basic, and I think ideally set up for kids. You've got an easy operation. There's a press button on the front there, and all we do is push it to open it. Now without pushing it, it stays locked. So while it's being moved around, or if you don't want it out and you don't want the child to use it, it stays closed. Once that is pushed, it opens it up and it locks it open. The good thing with these saws is number one, the handle length. The child can use both hands, and that's quite important because if they've got both hands on here, that's behind the cutting blade, okay? And what you don't want <clears throat> certainly in the early stages then start putting the hand next to it and sawing furiously because that's when the, the saw skips and they get a cut across the back of their hand. So to get them started I get them to put both hands on the handle just to get them used to that saw in motion. Once they're well practiced in that then we can start holding with the other hand. In the meantime though you hold the bit of work, you support it for them, they supply the horsepower in the sawing. The other thing with these is the teeth aren't massive and the blades are very forgiving. With some of the other saws that are out there, the sort of high performance arborist type saws, which are very, very good, the silky ones, the blades aren't particularly robust and you, you can snap them and I've had young people snap the blades on those. With these, you don't snap them, quite often you have to bend them back into shape but they don't snap. Both hands on. So as I said, first job, harvest the pole and the pole wants to be probably about as tall if not slightly taller than the child is. Identify the thick end and the thin end, and at the thin end, what you're going to do is you're going to measure off a hand span. And that's going to be your toggle. Now, instead of sawing off, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to show them how they can use their knife to cut all the way through the stick. So, we score a little indentation using our knife, remembering to work onto a flat surface, pushing downwards again nice and safe, making sure the supporting hand is well back out of the way of the cutting hand. Score it all the way around. Yeah, so unlock. So that's it, it should be twist like that, don't we? 
Yeah. And then carefully take it out. With that nail bit. With that nail bit. Very carefully. That's it. So we'll open it fully. That's it. And then twist the ring. Is it locked? Okay, that's good. Now, what we're going to do next is about there. Yeah. All right. Cut. You're going to do a little cut. Here. Just No. There. Oh. Yep. So we're just going to go around there, like that. I'm going to score all the way around, and I'm pushing downwards towards the ground. All right, and I'm making sure this hand is well away from the blade. There we are. Right and, and then you can show the child how they cut up towards that line, thinning the stick. Once you've gone round all the way, then let them have a go at doing it. Now, if they're a small child, they're probably gonna need a little bit of support from you. Certainly with Hazel, um, I actually hold her hands. And that's A, to help keep her hands safe, but also she's still doing the movement, she's still developing the muscle memory, but she needs to build that muscle memory. So we're working slow, working progressions, and above all, working safe. Okay. And when we cut, we always cut away from ourselves. Okay. So we're just going to cut gently up to that line. Push it to there, hold it away from your leg, and you're going to cut downwards on that. Okay. That's it. And then turn, and then do it again. And then turn and do it again. That's good. Don't push so hard and keep your hand back from the blade. That's Once we've been round a couple of times, then just get the child to snap the stick off at that exact point. That's it. And again. I'm going to use my knee. Use your knee. <laughs> it broke. Right where we cut it. That's it, break it off. Really good. Right, so that's going to be our tool. And what this shows them is that they don't always need a saw. If they're just making a short stick and it's a fairly thin stick, they can actually cut it to length just using their pen knife. With that done, then score a little line around the middle and again, repeat that process again. Cut up to the line and again, you can support them doing that. With that done, you then round off the ends of the sticks. So that's, that's your walking stick. Yeah, and what do we do with the toggle? Well, the toggle, we've got to round the end, yeah. you're going to use your knife, round that end, and I'm going to make a little channel in the middle. Can I peel that off? And it's little tiny cuts, alright? That's it, that's good. Wrong. So, that's it. And then out the way. And then you can put your cord on there. And I usually go for a length of cord that's probably an arm span and a half. In one end, I put a, a little constrictor knot, a jam knot, and that goes around the toggle. And at the other end, a fixed loop, something like a, a figure eight. And again, these are really good opportunities to start bringing knots and explaining knots in. The staff, well, the staff's pretty much done. You can round off the end if you want to season the stick and maybe put a screw in the end of it, just so it makes it a little bit more hard wearing, you can do, or just leave it as it is. Yay, toggle string time. Toggle string time. So, undo the knot. There's our length of string. What we do, put a little thumb knot in the end. What's a thumb knot? It's a simple one, that form a loop. Yeah. Right. Like that, and then take that end and bring it round from behind. Oh yeah, through. I know that knot. It's Pull it through. One. Okay. Then I'm going to do the same thing again, but this time it's going to round that standing part. And through there. I don't know that one. Okay. Right now, put your toggle in there. Let's line that up so that middle bit's there. Okay. And then we'll pull that tight. Then I got my very own toggle. It's your very own toggle. And what we'll do is we'll put a loop in the other end. And this one, what we'll do is we'll put uh, something called a figure eight. Right. So you've now got my own 
your toggle rope. So these two really simple projects that will get a child started in using tools and getting them used to using tools safely. Now, one little word of caution. When you're working with kids, you've got to make sure that your skills and drills are absolutely perfect. Because if they're not, the child will point it out. So rather than just saying, never leave your life on the floor, and then you do it, you need to make sure that your knife always is back where it's supposed to be. Always make sure you close the saw up after you've used it, put it off to one side. Take your time, make sure your drills are perfect. Last week, Hazel pointed out that I'd said, don't go back to pick a stick up once you've dropped it on the fire. I then did exactly that. I put some sticks on, one had rolled off and I'd picked it up. And yes, I wasn't in any real danger, but I had said, you don't ever do it. And so she had picked me up on it. And your child will pick you up on it too. Something else people forget is to actually practice the project themselves beforehand. You should be able to do it virtually blindfold because you've done it that many times and you've thought it through from the perspective of the person you're going to be teaching. Everything from the way you're holding the project to the way you're cutting, every single detail you've already run through in your mind so that when you come to do it with a child, you can focus totally on them. You haven't got to stop and think, oh, how am I going to get them to do this? Because you've already thought it through. Something else you can do with the little toggle project, go into my videos and look up bushcraft toggle rope. And there it is, a complete how-to on how to do that little project. Remember to emphasize to always cut away from your body and always make sure that your supporting hand is behind the blade. Also remember to remind them about the danger triangle or the, the blood bubble. And if you're not sure what I mean by either of those two phrases, perhaps it's time you got yourself onto a course where you would learn how to use knives for, for carving and whittling because it's an essential safety skill that you need to know. There's an old saying, know your stuff, don't bluff. And if you're teaching kids stuff, you really, really do need to uh, abide by that. Okay, what we'll do is we're gonna cut upwards towards that line. Okay. So, you're gonna hold with this hand. Yeah. Okay. And when we cut, we always cut away from ourselves. Okay. Teaching a child how to use tools safely, number one, is very, very fulfilling, but also, it's very good for their development, it helps give them confidence. They can pick an item up, they know what to do with it, and they know how to work with it safely. It's important that that safety rule is constantly reinforced. The last thing you want is for it not to be reinforced, then slip, have an accident, hurt themselves, because if they do, they'll never go back to it again. That's it, you're gonna pop it in your bag? Are you pleased with that? your bag that's full of grass. <laughs> this video, and I hope you found it useful, and above all, I hope you get out in the woods and give it a try. It is very rewarding teaching kids how to use tools, and indeed, teaching them bushcraft in general. So I'd really encourage you to get out there and do it. Remember the safety thing, and you won't go far wrong. If you did like the video, then obviously, hit that like button, remember to subscribe, and if you haven't already, hit that notification bell so you always know when our new videos are coming out. And there's gonna be a few more of these ones, certainly coming up for the summer holidays, so that you've got a, a bank of things that you can do with your kids out in the woods through that holiday period. Remember, you can support the channel. You can pop over to Etsy. We've got an Etsy shop, it's called Greencraft Shop. Over there, you'll find the Greencraft patch, our little logo which is getting very, very popular. I've just had another batch delivered, and within hours of putting them up, I've already got a good fistful of orders ready to be shipped out all over the world. You'll find other things on there, like uh, our EDC light pouches for carrying your pocket knife in, and also our Kahansky Minimal scarfs, which 
a very practical item. If you look back through some of the other videos, you'll see why they're quite so popular. You can always follow me on Instagram. I'm greencraft underscore zero one. Or you can always follow us over on Facebook. And on both of those, I tend to update fairly regularly on what I'm doing. So you can always see what I'm up to. As always, I hope you enjoyed the video. And until next time, stay safe.